talk about something that's maybe a bit more related to biology and we'll talk about how like human vision works and then how what we've learned about lenses will apply to how we see things. Okay, so if this is her eyeball, then, and this is where your, the light is coming in. And to simplify things, I'll just say that this is the lens, the light doesn't enter through the lens in your eyeball. There's other stuff that it goes through first, but I'm not a biologist, so. So if we have some parallel lines coming into our eyeball, then the lens will cause the, the beams to get refracted. And so they'll cross at some point in your eye and depending on where they cross, you'll get either good vision or bad vision that needs to be corrected. And as some of you might already know, the image that gets projected onto the part of your eye that's responsible for detecting the light is flipped upside down. This is the image, this is the object. This is a lens. So all those things that we just talked about with focal lengths and magnification and all that stuff will apply to the situation too. So this is where those light rays converge. So this would be your focal length F. This would be the focal point. So now, let's see, maybe I'll do three pictures. Okay, so these are all eyeballs again. And for normal vision, the light will come in and then it will get focused at a very specific place at the back of your eyeball. Such that the image that's projected on the back of your eyeball is clear to see. In nearsighted or myopia, The light comes in and it gets focused too soon. And 
So the image that's projected on the back of your eye is out of focus. So this one is in focus. This one's out of focus. And then the other type that you have is farsighted or hyperopia. And here the focus is somewhere behind your eye. And so again, it's out of focus. Some people it's so normally you should be able to see both far and near. If you're nearsighted, you can only see things close to you and farther away things are blurry. And then farsighted people are, they can see far away things, but they can't see things close to their face. There's a third type of vision problem, and it's also farsightedness, but it's not caused in the same way as these ones. So these are just like for nearsighted, your lens is too strong. And so it focuses the light before it's supposed to be focused in your eye. For farsighted, the lens is too weak. And so it focuses behind where it's supposed to. Uh, the other type of farsighted vision is can't remember what the vocab word was, but it's too, it happens as you get older and your lenses stop working properly. And so it's basically just a deterioration of the lens. It's not that the lens is too strong or too weak. And so that also causes it to focus behind your eye. So it's like for young people, it's not really possible that within one eye you can't have the eye be farsighted and nearsighted. But then as you get older, if you were nearsighted, you can gain, I guess it's not really gaining farsightedness. Your eye can get worse because the lens deteriorates. Um, so if anyone you know needs like bifocals or something like that, it's not because their eye is messed up in both ways, it's because they had nearsightedness and then their lenses, as you get older, your lenses deteriorate. And so you can't see things that are close to you either. Okay, so it would be bad if you just had to live with this. I am very nearsighted, so I have, I need my vision corrected. And so we're able to do that. With lenses outside of your eye that fix the problem with the lens that's in your eye. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll do nearsighted first. So maybe in red, I'll draw the normal light. So without any correction. So this is the eye lens. I'm going to start it a little narrower and just see why I'm on it. And then if we put a concave lens for like an eyeglass or something,
then coming out of the back of the concave lens, we know that these are diverging. And so then when it gets to the eye, now it will get focused where it's supposed to be focused. So for nearsightedness, your the lens in your eye is too strong. So what we do is we take a concave lens, stick it in front of your eye so that we spread the light out a little bit so that then when it enters the lens in your eye, when it gets overly focused, now it's going to focus at the correct spot in your eye instead of too far forward. You could probably guess how we're going to correct farsightedness. So again, you got your eye that has its own lens. And for farsightedness, the lens is too weak, so it focuses back here behind your eye. And so we're going to put a convex lens in your eyeglasses. So that will focus the light a little bit, oops, focus the light a little bit before it gets to your eye. Maybe that was too extreme. So do some of the focusing before it gets to your eye and then it'll focus in the correct spot at the back of your eye. And remember we talked about the strength of lenses previously and that's called power and it's this, the equation is one over the focal length and the power so this is just a measure of the strength of lenses And the unit for that is the diopter. So if you go to the eye doctor and they ask what your, like the strength of your glasses is, they're talking about the power, which is this diopter measurement. So then the next thing that we will talk about uh, when we're talking about vision and specifically how humans see things is color. And so again, you guys are biologists, so you might know more about this than I do, uh, but so, the human eye, we have rods and cones. And if I'm remembering correctly, the rods 
work best in bright settings. And these are what allow us to see color. And then the cones are what allow us to see in dimmer light. So I don't know that they work best in dimmer light, but they do work in dimmer light. But they don't see, or they don't detect different colors. And then the way that we see colors is interesting. So there are three types of rods that detect different ranges of wavelengths. So if we graph the wavelength and the so I would call this the quantum efficiency, but that doesn't mean anything to you. Uh, so in biological terms, this might be the rod response. but basically how much the rod detects that color of light. And so there's three different rods and the range of wavelengths that they detect looks something like this. And they're called S, M and L rods. Oh, maybe I have these backwards. No. Oh, I do. These should be the cones. So what I said here is the opposite. So the color vision is for cones and the not color is for the rods. And so for these wavelength ranges, the S is maybe 400 to 550. And then these two, or maybe 450 and then up to 650 and 700. And so the way that the color vision works is that whatever, and so on this side is more red and this side is more blue or violet, purple. And so if I see something that's very red, what's happening is that the L rods are the ones that are reacting the most. And then your brain interprets that signal as this object is red. If something is very purple, then your S uh, cones are the ones that are reacting the most. 
And so your brain interprets that signal as purple. Then anywhere in the middle of that, uh, like green, for example, uh, you're getting more uh, of an even mixture of all of the different tones reacting. And so your brain interprets that as a green light, because uh, green is somewhere in the middle of this uh, spectrum. And so in nature, we know that there are other animals that have more different types of cones. And so they can see a greater range of colors. Like I think the mantis shrimp or something like that has like a ton of different cones. And so it can see colors that we can't really conceive of because we don't have different, we don't like, we only have three to work with, three cones. And so we can only make so many combinations of colors based off of those three things. Um, but it's interesting to think about the like color to one species doesn't mean the same thing to another species. Uh, and then something that I had mentioned previously uh, quickly is that so if I say an object is blue, uh, what that means is that blue light is being reflected off of that object and my eye is detecting that blue light. So for, and for any other color, uh, that would hold true. And then the only things that are new are that something that's white light or something that looks white is going to have all wavelengths reflected. Because white light is made up of all of the wavelengths that we can see. And then a black object is going to have no reflected light or no, yeah, no colored light is getting reflected. 